All right, so you just went to that art store you like and you picked up some of that bright uh, colored, you know, acrylic paint that you saw and you can't wait to get home and just start painting it on whatever surface you have lying around the house. Should you do that? No, no, no. Acrylic paint needs a prepared surface, uh, something for the paint to stick to. When you do that, you're gonna use less coats of paint and you're gonna get the results you want regarding the intensity and the saturation of your colors. In fact, let's take a look at this wall. How many coats of paint do you think it'll take to make this white? Two, maybe three tops? What if you wanted a yellow or orange or red? Well, now you're looking at a lot more coats of paint. So normally you'd use a product called primer and you'd put that down first. And when that dries, then you would paint your color on top of it. Well, that's what gesso is. It's a primer for your painting. It comes in clear, uh, white, black. You can mix and match to get any, any gray shade you want. In fact, some people add a little bit of color to their white gesso so that as they're applying it, uh, they're kind of putting down a little bit of a tint or a color base to get started from. Oh, and at the end of this video, I'm gonna be showing some footage that uh, kind of shows me uh, creating this video. So if you're interested in that, please stick around. All right, let's talk about some other reasons to use gesso. First, earlier I mentioned paint adhesion. That's, that's the ability of, of gesso to provide a really sticky surface for the paint to adhere to. And, and gesso is great at this. It's probably the first and foremost reason to use it in the first place. Another reason is paint absorption. So if you've ever taken acrylic paint and tried to paint something, let's say like a, a piece of untreated lumber, for example, uh, you'll notice that when you put that paint down, the wood just absorbs that paint and it takes a ton of paint to get the look you want, if you can even get it at all. That's because that surface is so porous and everything just soaks down into it. Gesso is really good about this. It, it absorbs the right amount of paint so that you get the look you want with the intensity and the, the saturation of your colors while also using the least amount of coats of paint possible. And lastly, one I don't hear talked about too often is paint protection. So gesso sits on a layer between your surface and the paint underneath. And sometimes those surfaces, especially if it's not like a professional artist canvas or, or board, uh, they can have some sort of chemical in there from some other process. And over time, those chemicals can kind of move up into the paint layer. And that can result in having your paint have like a tint on it or just be ruined completely. Gesso provides a great barrier protection between your paint and the surface underneath it. Oh, but you say uh, the art store, the canvas is there. They've already got gesso applied. So aren't I good? And uh, the answer is yes and no. It just uh, it depends what you're looking for. If you're happy with the results you're getting so far with those those boards and, and canvases, then by all means, keep painting. However, there's a couple reasons you might want to add additional coats of gesso. First off, it's just generally better absorption. So uh, if you've ever noticed when you put some paint down and it just kind of pools on the surface and you got to spread it out a little bit more, Adding additional coats of gesso, I found, uh, helps that absorption process. It gives more material for that paint to be absorbed into. Another reason is if you need a really smooth surface. So let's say your painting requires a lot of detail work. Maybe you're using liner brushes or something like that. Uh, having additional coats of gesso and, and sanding between them is gonna give you that really smooth surface so they can get the best results with that kind of fine detail work. Now for my work, I use a panel called Gesso Board from a company called Ampersand Art Supply. I'll, uh, I'll leave their info below. Uh, their boards already come with gesso applied, but I typically add another two or three coats to it, uh, mainly for the reasons I mentioned earlier. I like uh, having that better absorption and I also like a really, really smooth surface. So two to three coats of additional gesso and I'm kind of lightly sanding the surface between each application. So when I'm applying gesso, I typically add just a little bit of water. This kind of kind of helps smooth out the mixture a little bit and makes it a little bit more almost milk-like in its consistency, so it's easier to spread around. Uh, you can use pretty much any brush or sponge, and lately I've been using this type of painter sponge here. I just find it gives me the, the smoothest results that I can get kind of out of the box. All right, something you might notice when you start to add gesso to panels, especially thin ones like this, is that when that gesso starts to dry, you'll actually see the panels start to warp a little bit. And this will freak you out at first, but uh, the way to counteract it is pretty easy. Once all the gesso is dried, you just flip it over to the back side and add some there. Usually I add an X just like this. You don't need to cover the whole panel. Usually an X will do. And then uh, when that's dry, you can flip it around and uh, start painting. All right, so uh, for this first shot we're setting up here, I've got uh, 
the camera in the back there and a monitor and then on the desk I've got a phone for for the script and a little remote control so I don't have to jump up and hit the record button and then on the background here I've got a shelf with some with some paint on it and a canvas print of one of my my paintings on the back wall so uh, yeah we're gonna sit down and get started on uh, this first section All right, this is the second shot here. I got the easel and the camera set up right there. I got these overhead lights up here that I normally use for painting and they're just not that bright enough to light me up over here. So I'm gonna add in just one little light here that's just bouncing off the ceiling. All right, moving from that shot to this uh, hallway shot, um, just a stool set up here in the hallway and a camera and a light with a grid on it right there. Put the grid on it because it was a little too hot on this door. But uh, this is what it's gonna look like from the camera position. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you are interested in some other tips that uh, help me create the kind of paintings and illustrations I like to do, check out this video next. Take care.